Are angels actually trying to contact you? Let's talk about the five ways that angels often speak to humans. Now, what some of you may not know is that there is an angelic light language. Now, this is not a language that is usually easily perceivable by most humans. And so the angels have to be able to get some sort of messages from their fifth and above <laughs> frequencies to our third dimensional ego consciousness frequency. And we're stubborn. I've said that in another video. I'll link it here so you can check it out. But we often need to have things sort of symbolize within our faces so that we <laughs> will actually pay attention to it. So coming in at number five, repeating numbers. How many times have you caught like a repeating number and you've been like, that, that is so weird. I have another video on that. I'll link that here. Why not? Uh, you know, and you, it catches your attention and you wonder what the heck, why do I keep seeing 1111? Why do I keep seeing 777 or 444, 333, 222? 222 is actually balanced by the way. Um, but this is often how these angelic beings can kind of spark our attention. Now, could this just be your brain being wired and, and noticing it. There are people who do that, okay? This is different when the angels are trying to talk to you, talk to you, <laughs> right? It is more of a, you will literally almost feel as if someone is touching your face and doing this and turning you and then you look down and there it is. Or turning your shoulders to make you look or to try to get you, they don't interfere with your free will, but to try to coax you to look and they're trying to let you know like it's going to be okay or here's what you're missing or here's what you need to know. And the way that we are built, we are electrical beings. We are mathematical beings in a mathematical universe. So yes, our brains are wired to be triggered by things that are in a sequence. So that is often a very, very powerful way for them to speak to us. You do want to be careful with this though. Always pay attention to your gut. There are times that I see 444 and I'm like, that wasn't an angel message because I don't feel lit up when I see it, okay? So pay attention to how you feel if you do see a number like that. Remember, it's more about those repeating numbers came out of nowhere rather than there's a building that I go by all the time and it has 444 on it. <laughs> like, you know, I know the building is there. So psychologically somewhere in my head, I know to look over because I know that that building has 444 on it. That's not the same thing as an angel speaking to you. Coming in at number four, obviously everyone knows this. Angels come with symbols. You might see uh, the shape of an angel in a cloud or uh, there might be something kind of weird that is a little bit abstract and you saw an angel. Again, that could be a psychological response as well. Uh, seeing white feathers, that's usually a big sign, especially when there is seemingly no reason to be seeing white feathers anywhere. Uh, I give the example one time that when I lived in New York City, we have pigeons everywhere, okay? So like if you saw a feather, it wasn't that big a deal, right? <laughs> but I'm talking about there's like a pure white feather just in the middle of the grass in your backyard and there's no seeming reason why it would be there. Same thing with rose petals. This is something that people don't often speak about and it's absolutely a sign from the angels. It's also a sign of blessings. It is associated with Mother Mary as well. So there's this beautiful uh, sort of divine feminine energy when you smell roses and maybe there are no roses around or suddenly somebody gives you a bunch of roses and they've never done that before, you know, or, or seeing the petals around, that's usually a sign from your angels as well. So when, when you are, you know, the angels are trying to talk to you, really pay attention to what you're doing. What were you thinking? Were you freaking out about something? Were you ruminating about something? Pay attention to that and feel in your gut and throughout your whole body what does that do for you? Does it give you a sense of peace? Now, if you just look at it and go, hmm, feather. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Again, maybe you live in New York City and you're like, nah, you know, they're all over the place. Well, then maybe that wasn't a sign from your angels. Some other signs include pennies, people. That, I, that feels more kitschy to me. I don't really buy into that. I don't think of the whole pennies from heaven thing. But if you do, that's wonderful. Really, it's about what kind of feeling does it inspire within you. But you'll often um, have maybe some freakier things happen. Again, be careful with this. We don't want sort of interloper souls coming in and posing, posing as angels and freaking you out and be like, oh, it's an angel. And it's not. But on occasion, if the angels are really trying to get your attention, you know, maybe you're spinning out about something and then all of a sudden you just feel the need to look down and there's a word that says later, 
okay, or something. It's like, worry about it later. Or your eye might be drawn to something that says relax, ease into it. You know, they'll use actual words on signs. And if you feel the need to look up inexplicably and you see it on a billboard or whatever, that's usually a way that they speak to you as well. People might also, whoever on a soul level is open to it, might speak through somebody. And I'm not, I'm not talking about mediumship necessarily. I'm speaking about suddenly somebody feels inspired to say something to you and they don't know where it came from. So this is often a way that they will try to speak to you as well. Coming in at number three, your thoughts. Now to be clear, angels never interfere with your free will. You'll hear me say that a million times. So nothing happens without our permission. So somewhere deep inside of you, you're okay with getting your messages through your thoughts. And maybe even you hear a sentence or something along those lines. Now, this is why we don't have, you know, skeptics, they don't really, they're not open to it. And so the angels don't disturb them. They don't come in. If they're, I'm sure their angels are sitting around waiting to be called upon. But if you don't, you know, if you're not into it, they're not going to come in and force a thought into your brain. Okay. They are protecting you still, whether you want to be a skeptic or not. But uh, if you're open to it, they will talk to you through your thoughts. So you will have a moment. This is something I love to do, especially when I know I'm spinning out and I start getting very into 3D reality and going, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get this settled or that settled? Or do I, am I gonna have to fight this? I don't wanna have to fight this, you know? And I'll just stop and I'll breathe and I'll say, show me or let me know. And sometimes a thought will pop into my head, you know, like I don't need to let them have control over me or why don't I just do this? the inspiration okay the inspiration they speak to you through inspiration so it could be a thought that turns into a feeling it could also just come right from that inspiration either way they're talking to you coming in at number two dreams now here's the thing with dreams angels will try to communicate with you when your ego consciousness is quieted down a little bit, but you still have that subconscious mind. So when angels are trying to come through and help you with some messages, it hits up against our subconscious mind and there could be weird symbols and then your mind starts twisting it. So you might say, well, angels don't talk to me in my dreams. I have nightmares. That's not the angels. The angels would never come in. God's angels would never come in and do that to you. Okay. So if you want to communicate with angels in your dreams. There is such a thing as dream programming or sleep programming. So you do a meditation before you go to sleep. You ask for Archangel Michael's protection and you ask for a message from your angels. Now you may wake up the next morning and be like, wow, I had a dream that I was in my underwear at a press conference. Like, thanks angels. What was that all about? <laughs> but remember, it's the same thing as like dream interpretation, right? Just pay attention to how you feel. Or if you wake up and you don't have any, you know, visual memory of, of a dream, pay attention to the sensations in your body and your emotions. Therein lies your message. And that is how the angels are talking to you. And number one, Angels talk through messengers. Yes, people like me. I know it's kind of weird. It's crazy. What are you going to do? There are angel mediums out there. Um, you know, there are some people who are, there's a difference between a medium or what we call as a medium and an angel medium. Mediums, just medium, they tend to deal with fourth dimensional beings. Angel mediums specifically deal with angels and archangels. All right. So that doesn't mean that your loved ones can't come through in that way. They just come through with their guardian angels. But really, you know, when we as humans come in here and say, hey, we'll give a message to somebody. You got to wire me for it, though. Make sure I'm <laughs> well equipped with all the tools to do this and make sure I go through all the life lessons to understand, you know, what people are going through so that I can develop really deep empathy. And so, uh, you know, I, I understand where people are coming from and I can communicate. You got to give me all those things and I will be a messenger here for you. Yes, the messengers of the messengers. So these would be people, and maybe you're one of them too, maybe you're not exactly a medium, but you could have the clairs. Okay, let's talk about the clairs, right? <laughs> Sounds like eclairs, like pastries. I want a pastry now. Ugh. So let's talk about the clairs. These are the sort of extrasensory abilities that people sometimes have. Um, People often go around saying, my gifts, my gifts, my gifts. And I don't like it when people say that. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Oh, it's my gift that I can hear angels. Ooh, But, you know, I mean, if you want to develop these skills, you can do so. Just it's imperative. 
across the board. If you're ever going to tap into one of these clairs that we're going to be talking about, you have to do so with integrity and pure intention. This is one of the biggest reasons why, you know, a lot of times people will come to me and they want me to teach them mediumship, especially angelic mediumship, and I won't always do it. You're either equipped to do it or you're not. Um, and, and your intentions need to be there. And you have to really understand why you want to do it. Because <laughs> this isn't an easy gig by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually very, very taxing on the physical body and on the mind, the heart, the soul. You know, maybe not the soul. Soul's got a lot of energy. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it just feels draining sometimes. So, the clairs. Let's talk about that. Clairsentient or clairsentient, depends on who you talk to. <laughs> I say clairsentient. That is clear. Clair means clear. So that's clear feeling. This was uh, one of the first ways that angels would talk to me and through me. So it was, I would feel it and I would feel the need to say it to someone and it would get me in trouble. And even though on a soul level, I had agreed to do this and I guess I thought it would be a good idea to just blurt things out at people on the other side and it would be fine. Once I got into the human body, I'm like, no, then people don't, they, they don't make me popular. They don't want, the cool kids don't want to hang out with me. <laughs> right? so, so I had to really, you know, even though you come in equipped, you still have to really sort of finesse it in this human body going along with your personality. So clairsentience is actually very, very common. This is the thing that you can, you know that you have it. You've heard people say, well, you know, when there's been a fight in the room, you might guess if there's a tiger behind you, you know, you're going to sense it and feel it. And this is meant to protect you in a very base kind of way. But this can also be one way that the angels are communicating to you and through you. The second kind of Claire, let's just get to it. Clairvoyance. I mean, come on, everybody here, everyone kind of uses that to say all kind of Claire's like you're clairvoyant. Clairvoyant is clear seeing people who have visions. And yes, uh, if you tap into that, you will so sometimes have like vignettes sort of flash through your mind. And that's how it happens for me. Um, I don't know anybody who sees things outside of them. Um, I'm sure people do. I, I haven't met them, but yeah, I'm sure people do that as well. Uh, especially the mediums who do like fourth dimensional mediumship and they're clairvoyant. They might actually see someone standing there and they can describe what they look like. It happens. It happens. I know there are going to be people in, in internet land going, this person's crazy. You're only saying that because you haven't experienced it. You'll be the first one coming and running to me crying. Oh my gosh, this freaking thing happened. I believe. I do believe. <laughs> what was it from Wizard of Oz? The lion going, I do believe. All right. So anyway. That is clairvoyance, clear seeing, having visions. Uh, clairaudience, which was my second level ability. So first I would feel it and then I would hear it. Uh, this gets a little tricky because if you're talking about, I'm not a psychologist, but if you are talking from like a psychological perspective, oops, this gets into schizotopal, doesn't it? Yes, a little bit. Um, thank God the DSM gives you nine shots to get out of that diagnosis, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Last I heard, at least. But if you hear messages, uh, that's how I auto write. I can actually hear. Um, and sometimes, again, it depends on where I'm at as a human and what I'm going through. So sometimes it'll hit me first as a feeling because that's that's my more natural um, ability. It hits that first. And then I hear the words. So that's definitely a way that angels could talk to you. So then there is claircognizant, which is clear knowing <laughs> these people i've seen this is kind of the sad one for people who do spiritual work and they're clear cognizant they're the ones that try to give somebody a reading and they're just it just is and people are like how do you know and like it just is i just know and people are like eh. i think humans get a little turned off by that if you're somebody who's clear cognizant and you do a spiritual business or you do readings for people leave your comments down below about what your experiences are you might say michelle what are you talking about that doesn't happen to me um but i've just seen people with that clear knowing, it does kind of rub people the wrong way. Um, not me. I see something beautiful going on and I'm like, awesome. What else? What else can you tell me? <laughs> what else are you picking up on? I love it. So that's another way. You don't know how you know it. You just do. This would be that kind of experience where, you know, somebody says, oh, I wish I knew what to do about blah, blah, blah. You go, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. did I just say that? Ooh. Where'd that come from? You know, it, it's that kind of feeling. You don't know how you know, you just do. There's also clear olfactory, which is clear smelling. This one is really fascinating because um, I don't hear about it too much, but some people actually think that they can smell death. This doesn't 
this isn't something that the angels would talk to you by, but just in case you run across that out there, um, they smell when something's coming. Um, they, it's like they, they smell a scent and then like a memory pops and then, you know, they suddenly get their messages through that. So that is really kind of incredible. And going into the whole roses symbol, you know, that could be something as well. Now, I've never done a reading like that, so I'm not really sure how that goes. But if you know, I want to hear all about it. I am fascinated by that. I'll leave it down below. There is even clear gustins, which is clear tasting. And again, I, now we're getting into it. Again, I don't know how much the angels kind of work with somebody in that way. But if we're talking about the clairs, that's one of them. Um, they can taste something and maybe that is meaningful to someone. Um, if I had that ability, if I suddenly tasted, let's say, really good pizza and, and I don't have pizza, I'm not eating pizza, but I have a taste and then it makes me think of like, you know, New York City and I'm sitting and then might, that might go into clairvoyance. I don't know. If you have that ability, again, leave your experience down below. And then there is Claire kinesthesia. And that is my, at least the way I did it, is you touch something, you get a message from it, and you can do a reading that way. I actually did that when I was younger. I would take someone's uh, object or whatever, like a watch or something, and sit there and hold it. And just for funsies, that's how I started out. I never said that I was a reader in that way back then. I would just hold it and start bringing stuff up. And by the time I open my eyes, the person is sitting across from me like, Give me that watch back. <laughs> like, how did you know all of that? So if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. I am sending you so much love and take care. Bye-bye.